hell on, Felicia. I'm gonna remember that. Remember it. Write it down. Take a picture. I don't give a fuck. Craig. Bye, Felicia. Damn. Y'all stingy. Okay, whatever Felicia here is presented with facts, no matter what they are, she will argue with them and always think somehow her absolutely ridiculous assertions can bend reality. But here is reality right here. 2 Peter 2. Destructive doctrines. But there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them, and bring on themselves swift destruction, and many will follow their destructive ways, because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. By covetousness they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time their judgment has not been idle, and their destruction does not slumber. 1 Jeremiah 531 The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests rule by their own power, and my people love to have it so. But what will you do in the end? Jeremiah 613 Because from the least of them even to the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness, and from the prophet even to the priest, everyone deals falsely. Jeremiah 8 10 Therefore I will give their wives to others, and their fields to those who will inherit them, because from the least even to the greatest everyone is given to covetousness, from the prophet even to the priest everyone deals falsely. Jeremiah 14 14 And the Lord said to me, The prophets prophesy lies in my name. I have not sent them, commanded them, nor spoken to them. They prophesy to you a false vision, divination, a worthless thing, and the deceit of their heart. Jeremiah 23 9 False prophets and empty oracles my heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man, and like a man whom wine has overcome, because of the Lord, and because of his holy words. Jeremiah 28 1 Hananias falsehood and doom and it happened in the same year, at the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah king of Judah, in the fourth year and in the fifth month that Hananiah the son of Azar the prophet, who was from Jibian, spoke to me in the house of the Lord in the presence of the priests and of all the people, saying, Lamentations 2.14 Your prophets have seen for you false and deceptive visions, they have not uncovered your iniquity, to bring back your captives, but have envisioned for you false prophecies and delusions. Ezekiel 22.28 Her prophets plastered them with untempered mortar, seeing false visions, and divining lies for them, saying, Thus says the Lord God, when the Lord had not spoken Matthew 7.15 You will know them by their fruits beware of false prophets, who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. Matthew 24. 11 Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Matthew 24, 24 For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Mark 13. 22 For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Luke 6, 26 Woe to you when all men speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. Acts 13. 6 Now when they had gone through the island to Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar-Jesus. 2 Peter 2. 1 Destructive doctrines but there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them, and bring on themselves swift destruction. 1 John 4. 1 Love for God and 1. Do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Revelation 16 13 And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Revelation 19 20 Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. Revelation 20 10 The devil, who deceived them, was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. I. Exhibit 587, and Your Honor, this is an audio recording that um, it will take about five or six minutes, so okay. it might be. Um, again, I'm 99% sure it's it's just them. Um, okay. But if I, I'll confirm. Okay. And Excellent. Mr. Depp, um, before uh, before we move on, at at you and Miss Heard saw each other in July of 2016, um, one one final time, correct? You testified to that, right? You saw each other in San Francisco, right? Yeah, yes, okay. we did. Um, All right. I'm still not sure if that was the final time. I believe the last time I saw her was in her divorce attorney's office when the agreement was signed.
Actually, but before we start, Mr. Depp, during this meeting that you had with her, at one point you tried to cut yourself with a knife, correct? I don't recall that, no. Okay, let's play this. I mean, I might have uh, made a move. From here, there is no more abridgment. I'm only going to transcribe the parts that you cannot hear easily. Please do not do that. Please do not do that. Please do Please don't cut yourself. Please don't cut yourself. Please don't cut yourself. Please don't Okay, I can't actually tell here if it's I need you to do what I want or I need to do what I want with Johnny Depp slurring his words because maybe he's drunk or something. Thank you. No, thank you. The sperm on the pillows.
dull, and it would be the worst thing in the world to use to cut Mold me with. <coughs> it would be too <coughs> painful and dull and dirty to use yeah, it. That's the tip of the No, no, please do not, do not, do, don't, 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 you're going to hurt yourself. Don't. It's okay. Please don't, please don't cut yourself. Please, please don't. Please stop. Please stop. Please. Don't, don't hurt yourself, please. Your Honor, I think that might, if it's okay with Your Honor, I'm probably going to move on to something else. Later, um, next later. time. Okay, I assume you still have quite a bit cross, or? A, a bit. I'm not, not exactly sure. All right, but more than we could do. Yes. In, okay. All right, that's fine. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like we've come to the end of our week, um, so I won't be seeing you again till Monday. Since I won't be seeing you till Monday, I just want to give you the, the large jury instruction I gave you, and I'll try to give you on each Thursday evening just to remind you since I won't see you for three days, okay? So remember, it's the court's instruction uh, to you, the jury, that you not read anything about this case, that you not watch anything about this case, you're not to listen to anything about this case. This applies to television, newspapers, magazines, the internet, and any online sites. Further, you're not to read. Okay, so um, again, if you have a brain in your head, you are on Amber Heard's side. And if you don't, then you're not. Um, everyone who matters... <laughs> who matters, wrote a letter, and we're gonna go ahead and read it right now. Okay, let's let's get into this. This is uh, NBC.com, it's not regional, it's not your local news, it's NBC, all of it, okay? NBC.com. National feminist organizations break their silence on Amber Heard in an open letter of support. The letter denounces the rising misuse of defamation lawsuits to silence people who report domestic and sexual abuse, which again, I have had for a long time. And if you've never, if you only come here at a post on my channel and you never watch a video, you don't know this, of course, but for a long time now, I've, I've been telling you the only reason Johnny Depp has this lawsuit against Amber Heard is to punish her and to control her. It's retaliatory litigation, that's what it is. More than 130 people, including Gloria Steinem and organizations in the field of women's rights advocacy and domestic violence and sexual assault awareness, have signed an open letter to support Amber Heard, who lost a defamation suit this year brought by her ex-husband, Johnny Depp, for an op-ed in which she was a public figure representing domestic abuse. The letter, which was exclusively shared with NBC News ahead of its public, oh, let me bring this microphone closer. Sorry, let's just do this properly. Okay, let's, yeah. Okay, hopefully the sound is okay. It should be better now. The letter, which was exclusively shared with NBC News ahead of its public release Wednesday, was signed by groups like the National Organization for Women, the National Women's Law Center, Equality Now, and the Women's March Foundation. It was written by a group of people who identify as domestic violence survivors and supporters of Heard. Heard filed a brief last month laying the groundwork to appeal a seven-person jury's decision in Virginia's Fairfax County Circuit Court to award Depp $10 million in compensatory damages and $5 million in punitive damages in June. Heard, who had countersued, was awarded $2 million in compensatory damages, but nothing in punitive, in punitive damages. Okay, and let's reiterate here. Amber Heard already won this case, and yes, it was her. Amber Heard won it. Sure, that newspaper won it, but also Amber Heard won this case 
all the way up as high as you can go in the United Kingdom, which is like, I think it's Scotland, Ireland, and uh, England. That's, I, I haven't checked it in about a year, but that's what it is. It's like this huge conglomeration of countries that are, you know, big countries in Europe. As high as you could go, Amber already won that. And she won it with a judge who actually was clearly paying attention to the evidence, unlike this jury, which again, I wrote a video. I, I made a video called My Letter to Amber Heard's Attorneys, and uh, I really think they were bribed. And if they weren't bribed, they're just, I, I don't want to say what I think of them. I think very little of them, okay? Very, very, very little. Because if you watch the main video here, that says this is the only video you ever need to watch about Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. He's actually trying to stab her to death because she's going to court against him. And that's the only thing you ever need to see as a jury to say, screw that guy. Can we also put him in jail? Can we give him the death penalty <laughs> for all he's done to this poor woman? Okay. Although the Washington Post essay never mentioned Depp by name, Depp's attorney said it indirectly referred to allegations Heard made against him during their 2016 divorce. During the trial, she testified in graphic terms about a sexual assault she alleged, as well as allegations of incidents of physical abuse. Depp denied all allegations of abuse. Okay, and again, if you look at my things, uh, I have two different videos. I don't have them up in front of me. I'm not opening them right now, but Amber Heard had no incentive to lie, and that is a big, big reason why she won the case in the UK. She virtually saying this about Johnny Depp could only lose and she could not possibly better her situation or lot in life telling this story about him. There's nothing to gain. There's only loss to face. And that is the thing that validates her story. The letter which denounces the rising misuse of defamation lawsuits to silence people who report domestic and, and sexual abuse is one of the big, biggest public shows of support of, for her after months of silence from many groups after the verdict. Representatives for both Depp and Heard declined to comment. The jury's decision was a legal vindica vindication for Depp, who lost a libel case in the United Kingdom two years ago. Again, he lost it as far up as you can. Every single court that could possibly hear this either heard it or decided there was no reason to bother hearing it. They looked at the papers and were like, nope, this, everything's fine. You got your trial and you lost. Put your big boy pants on. Okay, two years ago over claims that he had physically abused Heard, Justice Andrew, Andrew Nichol ruled against Depp in 2020 saying a British tabloid had presented substantial evidence to show that Depp was violent against Heard on at least 12 of 14 occasions. After the June verdict, activists called out other groups like Time's Up asking why an organization that had championed victims at the height of the Me Too movement. Okay, and Time's Up is another story. Did you know they fired almost everybody at Time's Up due to corruption and they're like reinventing the Time's Up organization? So if you haven't heard Amber Heard being supported by that group, it's probably because they were going through their own dramas. But they were, um, they were doing something called... Okay, and I can't remember the name, but basically... They were being way, 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 way too sympathetic to the men they were supposed to be uh, busting. After the June verdict, activists called out other groups like Time's Up, asking why an organization that had championed victims at the height of the Me Too movement was now silent. Many who did speak out in support of Heard, including the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence, were met with ferocious backlash from Depp supporters online. If anyone wants to read along with this, I have the link below in the video details so you can look at this article yourself. Every one of my videos almost has a link below um, about proof that I'm not just making this up, unlike everything else you guys are watching about Amber Heard, Johnny Depp, which is complete and utter horseshit that's steaming, hot, steaming from fresh, freshly being shot out. Okay, sorry. I don't want to go too graphic there, but... Everything you guys watch on YouTube is horseshit, period. Um, a spokesperson for the group behind the letter who asked to remain anonymous because of the 
online harassment she had faced for posting in support of her, said she believes that after the trial, individuals were afraid to speak out because they saw what was happening to the few who had. The letter says the ongoing online harassment of Heard and her supporters was fueled by disinformation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, if you're watching that umbrella guy or anyone like him and they're talking about reading the case, they wouldn't know what to do with the case. They don't know anything they're looking at. They have no concept of the law. And most everything that they're reading on something like that umbrella guy is just the way it is in every single case. It's literally the most perfunctory, basic. Everyone's art case goes the same kind of crap. And they're trying to say that it's news. It's not news. And also, everything in there could be completely fake. And that's expected in many, many cases. It's expected that one side is just lying their butt off and the other side is telling the truth. And that's a jury decision or a judge decision. So they don't worry that most everything you see in a court document is just a complete lie. It's expected. It's expected to be a lie. Like one side is totally lying and one side's totally, totally telling the truth. Okay. So, okay. Again, a little off topic. Let's get back to this article. The letter says the ongoing online harassment of Heard and her supporters was fueled by disinformation. And you could also call that sensationalism, which I also have. I'm going to be probably retitling that. I have one on sensationalism and I'm going to be retitling it sensationalism so you guys can understand what that means. That's a really important word for you to understand. So you stop supporting sensationalism because you're you're ruining the entire world with your idiocy and, and just believing whatever you see. And just because a majority of people is saying something that's ass nine doesn't mean you should believe it either. It's clickbait. They make money when you click on the video, okay? They don't care if it's true, and you'd have to be so stupid to believe them that you could never watch all these videos and believe something completely fake for years and years and sue anybody because the judge would think you were too stupid to even be to, to, to even have a right to go to court for believing any of this. Okay, misogyny, biphobia. And again, Amber Heard is maybe bisexual. She refuses to even qualify that. Most people are like they're gay or straight or somewhere in between. There's a huge amount of people who were not exactly gay, not exactly straight. They're somewhere in between. Amber Heard is somewhere in between. You guys act like she never has male uh, attraction to men. Well, she's dated men. She was with Johnny Depp, she was with Elon Musk. I don't think those are the only men she's ever been with. Um, yeah, okay. And she is not gay. She's not straight. She's somewhere in the middle, like many, 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 many other people, including probably all these people who are acting all biphobic. And a monetized social media environment where a woman's allegations of domestic violence and sexual assault were mocked for entertainment. Yes. And everybody who made a video trying to entertain somebody by calling a rape victim a liar. I would just like you to know you're going to hell. And I mean, unless you're my immediate family, I can't wait for you to be there. You're just horrible, horrible people. There's just nothing, nothing you could do could ever redeem that. You're the worst people on the face of the earth. The vilification and harassment of her and her supporters were unprecedented in both vitriol and scale, the letter says. Well, and again... What they're not saying here on NBC News, because they haven't proven it, is that it wasn't even people at all. It was bots. But again, I have this, I have multiple pieces on here about Johnny Depp and his bots. And most of the people who you might be talking to online are bots. They're, or, again, I did this other video lately called, Am I Paranoid? Yes, I am. Um, but am I even paranoid enough? <laughs> Some of them are bots and some of them are people that Johnny Depp pays probably in countries like Russia where they speak English, but the standard of living is lower and you can hire a lot of very bad people to do crappy things all day for an amount of money that somebody like Johnny Depp, who's made over half a billion dollars in his life, plus Disney and Dior can easily afford to pay. Okay. Kathy Spiller, the executive director of the Feminist Majority Foundation, 
said her organization signed the letter after it observed what she called a growing backlash against women who speak out against perpetrators of sexual assault, domestic violence, and intimate partner violence. If this can happen to Amber Heard, it will discourage other women from speaking up and even filing reports about domestic violence and sexual assault, Spiller said. And you know what that means? That means that you women who are on here are actually making yourself more likely to be raped because no one's even filing these reports about rape in the first place. And your rapist will go free. When on that video I made about women don't matter, if you haven't watched that yet, that woman was killed because another woman was raped by the same guy and they just never tested the rape kit. It happens all the time, all the time, all the time. Literally, if they had tested that rape kit, they would have arrested that guy, but they just hadn't gotten around to it. Supposedly, they got around to it afterwards and they were going to, but they probably would have left it sitting on the shelf forever and ever and ever. Okay, the letter says the verdict and the online response to Heard indicate a fundamental misunderstanding of intimate partner and sexual violence and how survivors respond to it. In addition to two dozen feminist organizations, more than 90 domestic violence experts and survivors advocates from around the world signed the letter to condemn the public shaming of Amber Heard and join in support of her. They include doctors, lawyers, professors, authors, and activists. Let me just make sure I'm still in the middle of the screen. Yep, for what it's worth. Others who signed the letter echoed their concerns that reaction to the trial on social media was harmful to everyday victims of domestic violence. They see the environment that this has created and they feel even less safe than before to come forward and speak out about the abuse they suffered, said Elizabeth Tang, the Senior Counsel for Education and Workplace Justice at the National Women's Law Center. Tang said abusers can use defamation suits to silence their victims. And again, they've been doing this for quite some time. It's very well known. If you Google retaliatory litigation many a day, it will put you to, through to a domestic violence um, website. Tang said abusers can use defamation suits to silence their victims or risk retaliation against their victims for speaking out. Tang said that among the reasons we felt it was very important to join this letter are that when courts do not dismiss these defamation suits in early stages, it creates a lot of trauma for victims to have to go through a very long, drawn-out, and invasive process just to prove that the things they said are true or that they did not defame the person they reported. And again, with 9 out of 10 people being biased against women, I think there's like, when you choose a jury, and I was trying to look this up the other day, but I didn't immediately find it, but... There's a jury pool, right? And then they start taking people out of that jury pool. You only get to strike maybe four people out of a 12 jury, out of, tw out of the whole jury pool, and then you end up with 12 people. Like you only get a certain number of peremptory challenges. No matter what you do, you will always, 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 almost always, okay, because every once in a while it won't be true, but... With 9 out of 10 people biased against women, almost every single jury that's ever been constituted in America or anywhere else on this earth has predominantly been biased against women. Forever. See? Do you see how unappealing that is to ever end up in court when the jury will be biased against you in almost every single case? It's so unlikely that you'll ever win that, uh, that lottery. <laughs> of a jury that's truly unbiased against women. It's extremely and exceedingly rare. And the times when it matters because it's a woman on trial is like, I mean, the numbers are astronomical. Okay, and it's often enough just the bias against women. If you don't do anything wrong and if you're completely right, like Amber Heard, it's, it's just so likely that you're still going to lose because people are biased against you. People don't believe when, uh, Amber had a right not to get beaten up by her husband. People didn't believe that raping your wife was wrong on that trial. These are facts. Many of the people there either believed it was fine for Johnny Depp to beat her up or rape her. 
and they're called upon to punish him for it when they don't think it's wrong. Again, I've got content on this. So look at the Amber Heard playlist. Just Google Amber Heard playlist or look it up on YouTube. It's on there. We cannot silence victims by using courts and lawsuits as a way to re-traumatize them because this is what's happening. Christian F. Nunes, National President of the National Organization for Women. Kristen F. Nunes, the National President of the National Organization for Women, said she hopes the letter is a reminder that the court system should never be used to strong-arm victims to recant their statements about their abuse. We cannot silence victims by using courts and lawsuits as a way to re-traumatize them because this is exactly what's happening. Sorry, it was a caption and now it's the, in, the, in the body of the, the uh, article here. Noon said, she said she hopes the letter raises awareness of new tactics that some abusers use against their victims, such as social media campaigns. Yeah, yeah. And Johnny Depp could afford a big one, but many of them will do this again. This guy is demonstrating how to punish your wife who complained about you to all the assholes in the world. Sorry for the language. I won't repeat that word, but that's what he's doing. And if you're supporting this guy, I can't wait for you to burn in hell. I can't wait. You really belong there. Hell is for the devil and his angels, and it's for you too. And you really belong there. And as long as you're supporting Johnny Depp, you couldn't belong there more. Okay, so think about that. You can still repent, but right now, if you support Johnny Depp, you are 100% going to hell. There's no exceptions to that in my book. If I'm wrong, I'll be real surprised, okay? But I don't think so. Um, <laughs> yeah, again, watch the Amber Heard playlist and try not to be a plague on humankind. Experts said they had a unanimous, unanimous message they hoped to send to survivors who read the letter. It is also a way to speak to all survivors and tell them you are not alone, Tang said. Okay, uh, Johnny Depp has now been proven, <laughs> because it wouldn't really be anyone else, to be not just a harasser of Amber Heard, but to be a harasser of anyone who supports her, but mostly women, apparently, uh, to the point where he has harassed a woman by trolling her with her dead child, images of her dead child to harass her with. This is documented. This is in Variety Magazine, which again, Johnny Depp's own uh, professional expert in Hollywood said is something that people in Hollywood pay attention to. So this is verified. Uh, if I kick you off my channel, it's because I'm almost positive you're a troll. The publications to carry the most weight in Hollywood in my opinion, after all these decades, our Variety, Hollywood Reporter, uh, Washington Post, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, those are the publications. Amber Heard supporters target of widespread harassment on Twitter, according to firm once hired by Heard's lawyers. Twitter trolls have engaged in rampant abuse and widespread targeted harassment of women on the social network who have voiced support for Amber Heard according to a research firm that had previously been hired by lawyers representing Heard in her defamation court case with Johnny Depp. The firm, Bot Sentinel, analyzed 14,292 tweets that included at least one of four viral anti-Heard hashtags, hashtag Amber Heard is an abuser, hashtag Amber Heard a lesson abuser, hashtag Amber Heard is a liar, and hashtag Amber Heard a less a liar and found that 24% of the accounts that posted them were created within the past seven months. In the report, released Monday, Bot Sentinel said that abusive trolls who identified as Johnny Depp supporters had subjected women to verbal abuse and targeted harassment. Accounts used hashtag Amber Heard a lesson abuser and hashtag Amber Heard a less a liar with the letter I purposely replaced with the letter L to deceive Twitter's algorithms, according to Bot Signal. Toxic trolls continued to tweet anti-Amber Heard hashtags and attack women weeks after the Depp vs. Heard trial ended, Bot Sentinel wrote in the report. In at least one case, Prodep trolls doxed a woman's family and created a fake Twitter account using a photo of the woman's deceased child to troll her, according to Bot Sentinel. In the report, 
The company disclosed that Heard's lawyers had contacted Bot Sentinel in 2020 and hired it to determine whether the social media activity against Ms. Heard was organic or if there was some other explanation, and the company concluded that a significant portion of the activity wasn't organic. For the report released Monday, the firm claimed neither Amber Heard nor anyone from her team hired Bot Sentinel to review the activity. No one hired Bot Sentinel to compile and publish this report. Last week, Heard's motion for a mistrial in her defamation suit with Depp was dismissed by a Virginia judge, who found no grounds to overturn the jury's verdict in Depp's favor. That came after the two-month trial concluded on June 1, with the jury finding that Heard had defamed Depp by alluding to domestic violence allegations against him in a December 2018 op-ed. They awarded $10 million in compensatory damages and $5 million in punitive damages the latter of which was reduced to $350,000 under the statutory damages cap. The jury also held Depp liable for a defamatory statement made about Heard by his lawyer and awarded her $2 million. According to Bot Sentinel's website, founder Christopher Buzzi founded the organization in 2018 as a community-funded project to help fight disinformation and targeted harassment. We believe Twitter users should be able to engage in healthy online discourse without inauthentic accounts, toxic trolls, foreign countries, and organized groups manipulating the conversation, the company says. Bot Sentinel said it sent Twitter a list of several hundred accounts that the company determined violated multiple rules and policies of the platform, including violent threats and platform manipulation. Twitter essentially left the women to fend for themselves with little to no support from the platform, Bot Sentinel wrote in the July 18th report. Asked for comment, a Twitter spokesperson said, Our teams are reviewing the accounts flagged in this report, and will take action according to the Twitter rules. I looked at the court documents and I emailed every single lawyer for Amber Heard, which was quite a few and then I fax them afterwards. I've had a lot of unusual problems since I've started making Amber Heard videos and I'm just going to cover exactly what I put in the letter today because not all of them are in this letter. May 13th, 2022 to the legal counsel of Amber Laura Heard. I would like to let you know about coercion, intimidation, and interference I endured by Johnny Depp which evidently resulted from my three and a half years of endeavoring to have him ejected from the movie industry. It seems natural to me that Johnny Depp would similarly intimidate witnesses in the case of John C. Depp II versus Amber Laura Heard, civil action number CL-2019-0002911. I began a campaign against Johnny Depp's employment in the movie industry after I watched a video called can Fantastic Beast 2 survive Johnny Depp? Which was sent to me from one of my YouTube subscriptions in November 2018. I was angered to learn he was still working on big budget movies after his widely covered domestic violence against Amber Heard. Right then and there, I began to post in YouTube video comment sections urging people not to support his career. I did this monumentally. I protested at Johnny Depp's Hollywood Vampires concert on May 14, 2019 in Denver, Colorado at the Fillmore Auditorium and uploaded it to YouTube, thus commencing what became the Amber Heard playlist, which is now a combination of some one playlist and some multi-playlist videos that have occupied up to seven YouTube channels with some content in English, Spanish, Hindi, and French. I talk about civil rights law and women's legal issues on the channel, which are subjects I have studied a lot. When I first began the Amber Heard playlist, it was displayed alongside my law playlist, Self-Representation in Court United States, which was the number one search result on Google and YouTube for self-representation and self-representation in court. My experience with Johnny Depp was, 
While traveling from Laramie, Wyoming, where I live, and heading to Denver, Colorado, I stopped in Fort Collins, Colorado, and went to a few garage sales. Johnny Depp appeared driving out of a neighborhood of regular, unremarkable tract homes. I discern from this happening where I do not live and in a place of no real note that the message is intended to be more threatening than if it was where I live, in effect declaring, I know everywhere you go. I pretended not to notice. I have had a stalker since the early 1990s, and I do this automatically as an acquired behavior. This incident happened three days after I uploaded a Spanish-language video on the Amber Heard playlist, which was July 5, 2021, about Johnny Depp's racism, in which he told Amber Heard that he would have black and Mexican men rape her. Johnny looked every inch as I recalled him looking at the UK trial, Depp v. News Group Newspapers Limited, 2020, EWHC, 2911, Queen's Bench, with wild, untamed hair and dressed in black, probably a suit, and maybe the same one from the trial. The effect this incident had on me, and I presume it was intended to have had, is to generate the suspicion any time a bad thing happens that Johnny Depp arranged it. Some notable examples are... I had an extremely close call when someone pulled out of a gas station right in front of me, intentionally while looking right at me. I barely stopped in time, and then they were vocally frenetic and said something that made no sense in the light of the situation about me having a problem because of being an extreme feminist. I do not remember the exact words. Not very long after the sighting in Fort Collins. There was an encounter on a bus that also made me wonder... And then two or three weeks ago, I had someone hit and run me with my car not moving while I was in it. Because of my stalker and also because I can't prove anything from what happened with Johnny Depp's appearance to even be a violation of the law, I did not contact you before. My stalker in the last few years has become more threatening again after an extended period of relative quiet since the early 2000s, I suspect because of my activities with the Amber Heard playlist putting me before the public and because of what I talk about. Believe me when I tell you my stalker is very dangerous. Though I thought I would not say anything before, I feel compelled to now as I watch the witnesses at the trial and wonder if Johnny Depp has intimidated them. I will likely start to talk about it in videos, though I know I will be called a liar and crazy. If you think about this incident, telling what happened makes the person who tells it sound crazy, so they will not tell people. On its face, most people can't see why it would happen. The incident does not appear to be unlawful as it was a single event, at least as far as I could reasonably prove, even if a judge believed my version of events, which is highly unlikely. I would like to let the court know about this if you think it is useful. Please contact me if you have any interest. I also will contact you because I do not know if you will get this in time or how much email you get and if it will be buried in an email account that is very full. Teresa L. Dowling In United States law, a statement against interest is a statement made by a person which places them in a less advantageous position than if they had not made the statement and is as a consequence deemed credible as evidence, usually within a legal trial. For example, if a driver in an automobile accident boasts publicly that they were speeding, it may represent a legal admission of liability. It is analogous to the criminal equivalent, the statement against penal interest which is a statement that puts the person making the statement at risk of prosecution. Statements against interest by parties not presented at trial may be admitted as evidence where in other circumstances they would be excluded as hearsay. Under the Federal Rules of Evidence, Rule 804 B. 3 provides a statement that a. A reasonable person in the declarant's position would have made only if the person believed it to be true because, when made, 
it was so contrary to the declarant's proprietary or pecuniary interest or had so great a tendency to invalidate the declarant's claim against someone else or to expose the declarant to civil or criminal liability, and b is supported by corroborating circumstances that clearly indicate its trustworthiness, if it is offered in a criminal case as one that tends to expose the declarant to criminal liability. C. Fed. R. Evid. 804 b 3. The rule was last amended on December 1, 2010. See legislative history with links to key documents. Declarations against interest are an exception to the rule on hearsay in which a person's statement may be used, where generally the content of the statement is so prejudicial to the person making it that he would not have made the statement unless he believed the statement was true. The federal rules of evidence limit the basis of prejudices to the declarant to tort and criminal liability. Some states, such as California, extend the prejudice to hatred, ridicule, or social disgrace in the community. The admissibility of evidence under the Declaration Against Interest exception to the hearsay rule is often limited by the Confrontation Clause of the Sixth Amendment. A declaration against interest differs from a party admission, because here the declarant does not have to be a party to the case, but must have a basis for knowing that the statement is true. Furthermore, Evidence of the statement will only be admissible if the declarant is unavailable to testify. For example, California's Evidence Code paragraph 1230 defines declarations against interest as evidence of a statement by a declarant having sufficient knowledge of the subject is not made inadmissible by the hearsay rule if the declarant is unavailable as a witness and the statement, when made, was so far contrary to the declarant's pecuniary or proprietary interest, or so far subjected him to the risk of civil or criminal liability, or so far tended to render invalid a claim by him against another, or created such a risk of making him an object of hatred, ridicule, or social disgrace in the community, that a reasonable man in his position would not have made the statement unless he believed it to be true. Okay, now I study law and I know something about all different kinds of law. I think that's very important to know something about all different kinds of law. I'm not a lawyer. I don't know everything about it. But I'm going to make you a video by people who really, really know what they're talking about and me, both. And so you can see whether you believe me or not that other people who are very, very credible mean this is just not up for debate. Amber Heard did not get married for money because if she would have got married for money, she would have stayed married a lot longer. She gave up $24 million in just one year prematurely divorcing Johnny. Okay, I'm doing a basic Google search. Uh, this is just how much wine does Do Johnny Depp drink. See how easy it is? 30000 a month. It also says he made, what was it, $48 million the year after he divorced Amber Heard. So why didn't she stay married to him? She would have made $24 million being married to him one more year. Uh, women get shafted in the court system. Watch this video I made years ago below. This is the short version. I will give a link to the video and a link to the paper if you want to read that. But women do not do well in the courts, especially if they don't have as much money. Amber and Johnny got divorced in California. One of the most important matters that is addressed after a divorce is property division. Spouses can establish their own rules for property division through a written settlement agreement or through an enforceable prenuptial agreement. If there is no written settlement agreement or prenuptial agreement, then a court will divide the marital property. Property division rules differ on a state-to-state -state basis, depending on what statutory guidelines the state adopts. In this presentation, we will first discuss the basic principles and mechanisms of property division. Next, we'll look at what property is subject to division upon divorce. 
divorce by defining marital property and separate property in community property states and other places. Finally, we will briefly discuss prenuptial agreements and their effects on property division. First, let's look at a background of property division. There are two ways of viewing marital property. Some states are community property states. These include Alaska, Arizona, California, Idaho, Louisiana, Nevada, New Mexico, Texas, Washington, Wisconsin, and the territory of Puerto Rico. Community property states assume that all marital property inherently belongs to both spouses equally, simplifying division upon divorce. Other states that do not make this assumption engage in equitable distribution of marital property. In community property jurisdictions, marriages are considered a 50-50 partnership. Property is either classified as marital or separate. All marital property is deemed owned one half by each spouse and will be divided evenly. Division of community property can be abrupt and may not seem fair to either party because of how strict the 50-50 division rule is. In these states, marital property is defined as all real and personal property acquired during the marriage by either spouse. As a result, all marital property is owned one half by each spouse. The following types of real and personal property are examples of marital property. Earnings and wages accumulated during a marriage. A portion of a pension that was earned during a marriage. Home furnishings purchased during the marriage. Stock options earned during the marriage. And interest income earned by business investments made during the marriage. On the other hand, separate property is not subject to 50-50 division. The following are examples of separate property. Property that was owned by a spouse prior to the marriage. Property acquired by gift. Property acquired through inheritance. And property acquired by bequest. In the case of a mixture of separate and community property, the property can be considered community property when there has been commingling. For example, if a husband purchases a vacation home prior to the marriage, but later adds his spouse's name as a co-owner of the vacation home, it can lose its status as separate property. The vacation home becomes commingled and is classified as marital property. Property is also classified as marital if the two spouses intended for it to be classified as property for both. For example, if a wife inherits a car from her father, but she permits her husband to use it at will for joint purposes, the car may be considered marital property since it was used by both spouses in the ordinary course of the marriage. Now we'll look at equitable distribution. Equitable distribution of marital property is the most common property division regime employed in the United States. The divorce court will equitably divide the property in a reasonable and just manner. Equitable property division statutes are designed to make property division less acrimonious and more fair by employing a variety of factors in determining how to divide the property. Equitable division is not necessarily equal division. Equitable simply means that the division should be just or fair. The factors that a court will employ for an equitable division inquiry include duration of the marriage, marital fault if fault grounds for divorce are present, the age, education, background, and earning capacities of both parties, the standard of living of each party during the marriage, the disparity of earning capacities between the two spouses, the needs of each spouse, the child custody provisions, and each spouse's opportunity to acquire future income and assets. For example, in Bice v. Bice, the New Jersey Appellate Court found it to be reversible error when the lower court failed to comprehensively review the parties' year-by-year -year bank deposits to determine the income that should be imputed to the husband for purposes of equitable distribution and alimony. The court required the trial court to engage in what amounted to a forensic analysis of the couple's deposits, business expenses, and possible unreported income to make an appropriate determination of division of property. In the case Mojda M v Jamshid A, the New York court carefully considered the value of the educations achieved by both spouses during the marriage and the potential future incomes that were generated by these educations when dividing up the marital property. Each spouse was considered to have drawn from the marriage the value of his or her education, and this value was factored in when dividing up the marital assets. The court in that case also looked at other factors, such as the husband's refusal to grant a religious divorce when dividing the marital estate. 
Under an equitable division regime, spousal maintenance and child support payments can also influence property division. For example, the court can award assets to one spouse instead of that same value being paid by alimony. If a court might otherwise award $1,000 per month to one spouse in alimony, but the court believes that a lump sum payment might help the other spouse more by allowing the other spouse to pay for job training, the court may reduce the alimony and award the spouse compensation during equitable distribution. Now we get to the part of our presentation about prenuptial agreements and property division. Prenuptial agreements are contracts entered by the parties prior to the start of a marriage. These contracts establish the rules for property division and influence property division in the event of divorce, regardless of whether the parties live in a community property or equitable division of property state. Spouses can use a prenuptial agreement to avoid or override the default principles for property division in their states. If the spouses do not have a premarital or prenuptial agreement in place, then the normal rules for property division apply. Property division is an expensive and time-consuming process. Divorcing spouses are encouraged to settle their differences and distribute property with a written property settlement agreement. When this amicable resolution to property division is not possible, courts will employ a process mandated by the state legislature, either community property division or equitable property division. My name is Jim Nelson and I'm a licensed attorney in the state of California. And if you're watching this video, you may be considering divorce. And if you're considering divorce, it is critical that you have an understanding of this big concept in California, which is called the 10 year rule. And that means a marriage 10 years or longer is considered a long duration marriage in California. Conversely, anything shorter than that, shorter than 10 years, is a short term marriage. Why is this distinction so incredibly important? Because California Family Code section 4336 explains that the court in a long duration marriage retains jurisdiction indefinitely. What does that mean? That means the court has the power indefinitely to make decisions for the parties involved, such as compelling one to pay the other spousal support indefinitely. In a short-term marriage, generally the court only retains that jurisdiction or that power for half the life of the marriage. So if you're married for eight years, the court can't compel one to pay maintenance for four years. I'll give you two examples to provide some context. Let's say Fred and Wilma have been married for 20 years, and it's, it's a rocky marriage. Wilma complains often that Fred, he's not very bright, he yells too much, and his feet are disgusting. Wilma files for divorce, they get divorced, they've been in a long duration marriage, 10 years or greater. So the court has the power to compel Fred to pay Wilma support indefinitely or until she remarries or passes away. Let's take those same facts and we'll shrink it down to an eight year marriage. Let's not forget that his feet are still disgusting. In an eight year marriage, Fred will be on the hook for four years, half the life of the marriage. This is why that concept, the 10 year rule, it's incredibly important to understand that regardless of what side of the divorce you're on. I hope this video has helped and please look for future videos very soon. Thank you.